In this section, we need to import a file into a suitable database package. For this purpose, we will use FileMaker Pro. When we open FileMaker Pro, we can convert an existing file to a database. If we select comma separated text files to show, then we can find the file we have to import, which is n7stock.csv. When we open this, we need to tell the software that the first row in that file has the field names. And then we will save our database with an appropriate file name in our folder. So here is the imported file into our database. Now we need to assign certain data types to the fields. We can do this by clicking on the small arrow on the right hand side of each column heading. Staff should have field type text. The default field type is text, so we don't need to change anything here. And it's the same for company and item. Unit should be numeric. So we'll choose field type number. Now currency in FileMaker Pro comes in later when we're setting the layout, so we'll leave that for now. Sales is also numeric number. And delivery is Boolean. We can see that there are two possible values in this column, N and Y. So the field type is still text but we need to set some options that will only allow these two values. So in the options box we can click on the validation tab and we need to make sure that only members of a certain list are allowed. So click here, member of value list, and we're going to define the two values that are allowed. So we're defining a new list, let's call it boolean and the values which need to be on separate lines that are allowed are Y and N. Let's click OK, OK, and OK again. So now we've defined our data types. We need to produce a screenshot showing we've done this. To do, do so in FileMaker Pro, click on File, Manage, Database. Then on the Fields tab, if we select all of our fields, click on Print, and click on Preview, here we can see how we have defined our fields. Of course, the unit isn't defined as currency, but that will become apparent when we print the table. Now we can take a screenshot by pressing shift Control command 4 and selecting all of this text and we can paste that into a Word document that we will let later print as our evidence. Cancel here. Next we need to insert some data. So we can insert data, we could press new record and just type in the data given. Or you can actually just click this plus icon at the bottom of the screen. Check for errors. No errors. Save the data is unnecessary, it is all automatically saved. Now we want to produce a report. And looking through the instructions, the first thing we need to do is create a new field called cost, which is calculated by multiplying the unit price by sales. So to create a new field, we click on the plus sign here, it's called cost. 
and click on the arrow on the right hand side. The field type here is calculation because this is a calculated field. Press OK. And it is equal to unit times sales. Calculation result is a number. OK. And we can see that the cost has been calculated correctly. Now to make a report, the simplest thing to do is, is to click on the new layout report button. Now this is not visible by default in FileMaker Pro. To view it, to make it part of your normal menu, you need to click on view, customize status toolbar and drag it from here up into your into your menu your toolbar click and this is going to be our report so let's click on report we don't need any subtotals or grand totals in this report so deselect those items next the fields we want to show our company item unit, sales, and cost. We don't want any categories on our report, so do nothing here and click Next. The data should be sorted into ascending order of cost. So cost, click on cost ascending order. a theme, let's use the default theme. The heading, let's use large custom text for the heading. Heading should be Tell or Dudley or Simplex. And in the footer on the right hand side, let's use small custom text to type our name, candidate number, and center number. There's no need to create a script. Click Next. Let's view in browse mode. And here's our report. However, it's not quite finished because we haven't s selected only the records where the company has certain names. So the final thing we want to do, click on Find. First find Dudley and click on New Request. Tell, new request, simplex, and perform find. Here is the result. Now the sorting has gone wrong having done that, so we need to resort the records by cost in ascending order. Now, before we print this report, we need to fix the currency settings. So click Edit Layout, then click on Unit, because Unit needs to be displayed as currency. Click on the Inspector button, that's this little I. And the formatting needs setting as currency, with a fixed number of decimal places 2, and the currency symbol should be the pound sign. If you have an American keyboard, you can press Option 3 for a pound sign. Let's close the inspector. And did the same thing for cost. Inspector. Currency. Two decimal places in pounds. That's done. We've saved layout. Exit layout. And that looks perfect. So the final thing is to print the report. File, print. There it is with our con candidate number at the bottom.
And one more thing, we should have noticed the page orientation by default is portrait, and it did fit on a single page. Next we need another report. So for this one, again click on the new layout report button. Report, but we, there's no subtotal or grand total. Next. Here we want company item staff. And we also have a, a condition to do with delivery, so let's include delivery for now. Next, there's no categories, so click Next. Sorting should be in ascending order of staff. So staff, ascending order, and descending order of company. So double click company, click on company, click descending order. Default theme again is the simplest. The heading should be Let's put it in the top left again with large custom text. And this time our name, sentence number and candidate number should be on the left hand side. Again let's use small custom text. Next, no script. Next. Browse mode is fine. Finish. Is okay, so nearly there? What do we still need to do? We only want to show records where delivery is yes, and the words A4 and file are part of the item field. So again, click on Find, and the item should have the words A4 file. We can just directly type in the two words here and it will pick out any records that have these words in any order in any, any position. It's a bit like a Google search. It doesn't matter about the order or if there are any w words in between. And the delivery must be yes. Why? So click perform find. There we go. So that's nearly what we need except we shouldn't be showing the delivery column in our report. So if we click on Edit Layout, we can just delete the delivery, save layout, exit layout, and there we go. So again, file, print, and we can print it out. Check our name and number on the bottom. And we want a final report that has a summary from the staff and sales fields. Let's go back to our original layout. Show all. Now to create a summary we need to add two more fields. One field is counting the number of sales by each member of staff and the other one is calculating the sum. So we click on plus to add another field. Let's call this total sales. Let's call the other one count of sales. Now both of these are summary fields. So we click on field type summary. And the first one, the total sales, is going to be the total of the sales field. So I click that. That's fine. OK. Now, the numbers here don't yet refer to any particular member of staff, they're just the total number of sales of everybody, but that will all sort itself out soon. Um, count of sales, similarly, field type, summary. Here it's not the total, here is a count of the number of sales. Okay. Now, the final thing we need to do, if we want to show a summary by member of staff, we need to sort the data by staff name. So if you just click on the staff, on the top of the staff column, it's actually sorted them 
into alphabetical order. And as we don't have to print this report, we only have to export it. This is very simple. We click on File, Export Records. And because we want to export to Excel or a spreadsheet, let's export as comma separated text. And because we need to show the total number for each member of staff, we need to select here group by staff. And we want to show staff member and the total for each staff member and the count for each staff member. But we don't want any total overall sales, so we can remove total sales, remove count of sales, just to show these three items. Press export. And here we can see in Excel the required data. So this can be used in Excel. It can also be copied and pasted directly into Word as we, as we do need to do. And that's the end of the database section.